site for the beef completely assembled. Okay, what's that? We have a poor quality shot of after when Gwyneth said I hurt me. Doing that. that jury instruction conference tomorrow. Um, I need you to tell me when, if, if it'd be better to have it at lunch or at the end of the day tomorrow. So think about that. Talk amongst yourselves and get back to me. Thank you.
construction issue. Thank you. Sorry to be vague. Uh, with the newly disclosed section, if they're going to use that with Terry, then the instruction read that and the clerk that we are going to call Craig Ramon for body confirmation of the that's exhibit. For okay. okay. The stipulated state will be giving the jury forty four. Printed out, but it was the neutral. Agreement. Other orally, you know, to go was fine. What we were requesting. What's in your filing? Well, I think Your Honor mentioned that you neutral and just mentioned. Um, uh, I consider your arguments, but I'll have to go through the language and make a decision. Right. So, uh, should we handwrite it? Because we will be now since we last, you know, 15 minutes. Right. Is that what I've got here? Yeah, except that sentence. We're part of the last sentence. We're previously unavailable to either party. I think, I think the simplest one, like, uh, Exhibit 44 and a third party, and both parties are agreeing that uh, this is firm. I think I've got enough. I can probably craft some. You heard, I mean, we're going to take a look at that. Is is I think on the fly, and I'm going to ask that the council not embellish any of the facts. Good morning, members of the jury. Pray that your this morning was safe and uh, everyone got here okay. Um, the the weather outside is still winter, I guess. Well, um, there is a new piece of evidence in this case. I'm going to tell you about that. <clears throat> a viewer that's been following this trial out out of the and from the viewer, through their efforts and expertise, through through that, we now have a copy of what was, and you will receive.
going to be an exhibit. It's Plaintiff's Exhibit 44 and Defendant's Exhibit 102. Plaintiff's Exhibit 40 that this new exhibit is authentic. Plaintiff, you may proceed. Thank you. Mr. Ramon, you'll need to be sworn in again as a witness. It's a new day. Right up here, sir. Um, do you solemnly swear the testimony you are about to give in the matter before the court to, to be the truth? The whole, so help you God. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Ramon. Hey, good morning. Um, I've handed you uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 44. Did that before? Yes. And this uh, is, are the comments and postings on uh, meetup.com. Meetup is that correct? Yes. The day of the crash, correct? Yes. And uh, first I'd like to turn you to page two of Exhibit 44, Plaintiff's Exhibit 44. And on the lower left, you see the color photograph of the woman smiling? Yes. The key patroller that uh, you met on the day of the crash? Uh, uh, oh, yes, that's, yes, I believe that's her. That, that's Whitney Smith that you met that day? And you made a few postings on this meetup.com website, correct? Yes. Okay. I'm going to read some of the, your postings on that day, and uh, so I'm going to reference some of the pages. Could you turn to page four of nine? The page numbers are on the bottom right. So, do you see page four of nine? Four yeah, yes. Nine. Okay. Your first comment on uh, page four. I'm just going to read it to you and ask you to confirm that this is what you uh, posted. Um, but before we start that, you'll see it says 2,588 days ago. Yes, I see that. And this was probably before the ski crash, uh, but on the same day, correct? It's. I'm. I'm not, I'm not sure. Exactly. Okay. So I'm, I'm. I'm guessing it was probably. Um, it was it was right around. Oh, uh, which which in the middle of the page? Um, I'll j just yeah, just give Deer Valley your pass. Yes, that's okay. That's so true. You 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 wrote or typed in that day. Just give Deer Valley your pass. They have your photo. It will be a great day. I will be on the hill at nine thirty. That's uh, your first posting that day. You believe? Uh, yes. Okay, and then at the bottom. Of the page four. You have another post. Maybe, um, maybe that's a different day. Uh, I'm going to move to the, the next one. The uh, uh, six of nine. Can you go there? Okay, I'm going to read just what we, uh, you typed in there in the middle. The, um, it says, Scott, Terry was not doing the man thing. Terry had a bad hit to the head. You do not have the ski patrol take you down the hill if you have a pain in your ass. Is that what you typed that day? Yes, it is. This was the day of the crash. Uh, this was a few days after. Okay.
Then at the bottom of that, page six, and we're going to continue to seven. It has your name, and then it continues on to page seven. I'm going to read you what uh, page seven. Scott, the thing you did not see was Terry was knocked out cold. Bad hit to the head. Not. Sh I asked Terry what his name was, and he did not know. Scott, it scared the hell out of me. Is, is that what you typed? True. And that was on or around the uh, day of the crash. You have another comment. Do you see that? Yeah, yes, I do. And uh, you typed, Scott, thanks for the humor. I got it when you were trying to make sorry. You typed that, correct? Yes, I did. Then the final page, page eight of nine. And under your name it says, you cannot make this up. Gwyneth took out Terry, type that. Yes, is it that is. The week after the crash? Yes, it is. Okay, and uh, I, except for the uh, nine, uh, that's all I have. Uh, who is Barry T in Exhibit 44, plaintiff's exhibit? Terry T is mentioned. Remember? Um. Could it be Terry Sanderson? Okay. Yeah. It, um. Why don't you look at the very T comments and see if it. Re re Craig, would you go to page two of this exhibit 44? Okay. On the left, it says Very T, event organizer. Yes, I do. And also, so two over, it says Kurt L, event organizer. Groups. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Was Kurt L. at the uh, meetup group at Deer Valley? Okay. Go, go back to the left and uh, look at Very T. Are you able to uh, above Very T? It looks like, looks like Terry, and Terry was the one who organized the, uh, the, the meetup groups up at Alta. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Mr. Bueller. Mr. Egan? Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Ramon, good to see you again. I have a couple questions from the defense. Um, so the first would be, at the start of this page, and I haven't used this uh, Elmo projector before, so give me a second. Do you see? Do you see that that uh, uh, on page two? Thank you. I have to press focus. Okay, there you are. So, you see that there's some photos there. At the yes. Point? Was that Whitney Smith? I believe so. The ski patroller who responded to Mr. Sanderson on the hill. Yes. And uh, and cared for him during the urgent care or the first aid clinic visit that he had there on the ski, ski hill? Yes. And were there any, to your memory, GoPro or other videos posted on this web page? No. And then, um, and, and I believe uh, you're unaware of any GoPro footage at all, is that correct? Yes. And then if you go to page 
Let's match it up with mine here. Page seven. Um, actually, your name is cut off at the top there. So if you look back at page six, can you see that it, note that you wrote? Is that right? Yes. Okay. And in that note, you write, Terry did not know his name. I asked Terry what his name was, and he did not know. But I believe... I had to really think hard about it. It took like four or five seconds for him to, to remember his name. But that's not what you wrote here. You wrote here, Terry did not know his name. When I first asked him, he, he didn't know his name. He had to really think about it. I asked Terry what his name was, and he did not know. Yeah, he, he, when I asked him, he, he didn't, didn't know any. He just took some time to kind of just think about it. And then, he, you know, after about four or five seconds, he just said, Terry. Okay. So what you wrote here is not what you told the jury last week. Is that fair to say? Um, could you please repeat that? Just he, here in your note, you do not say that he did later remember his name. You didn't remember it all. And as I understand it, that was different than what you told the jury last re week. Is that correct? Yeah. And about, about this, I didn't go into much detail, you know, on, on this. I had a hard time knowing what his name was. Okay, so let's go to this last page, page, well, I guess... There's a kind of blank page at the end, but page eight, the last page with your comments on it. Do you, there at the top, another one of your comments. learning old technology. I appreciate this. Thank you. Okay, so um, in this comment that uh, you wrote, correct, this, this top comment is your... Yes, it is. Okay, and in this comment you wrote, Gwyneth took out Terry last week. Last Saturday, her son broke his arm skiing at Park City. There's a lady I know that works at Alta, An or, I mean, works at Snowbird and Deer Valley. She works up at the Montage, or Deer Valley. And uh, and she told me, okay. And then Gwyneth happened, and then she told me that what happened. Sorry, she, that's she, not she, clear to me. So she, she, she knew she, what happened. She 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 knew that uh, that Gwyneth took out took out Terry, and so then when I saw her, she told me what what happened. I didn't ask her about it. She just told me what that, that that's what happened. But she wasn't there at the collision, right? No, she just worked up, up at the hotel. So how would she have any knowledge of it? I have no idea. For a lot of the, the private jets, the charter jets, that's where they fly into that, that part of the airport. So you didn't tell these people what happened, even though you were the one at the collision site? Yeah, I, I told my friend what happened, yes. Okay. So you were telling people about this, this accident? Yes, I told people. And then they were telling you things they knew about Miss Paltrow, that at least they claimed to know about Miss Paltrow? Yes. But they could be mistaken, is that correct? Yes. Didn't, in fact, break his arm while skiing. You wouldn't dispute that. You wouldn't have any re way to dispute that, correct? I have no idea. I, that's just what I was told. Um, let me go back. I just have, I think, one more question for you. So if you were to look at page 7, those comments that I believe you've connected to Terry Sanderson, uh, those ones in the middle of the page, you, you can read them um, to yourself. But my question is, Give, described him as being knocked out cold in other comments here. Um, I, I wanted to ask you whether you found Terry to be articulate in his posts and comments on this page. Goodness, if you could point out something. Okay. So um, 
Maybe it's better to go. The, these are kind of difficult because they don't have dates on each comment, correct? They just show this one at the bottom. You see on Very Terry's uh, or Very T's comment, it says 2,584 days ago, correct? Yes, I see that. Okay, and. Okay, yeah, I don't know that. So I'm asking Mr. Ramon, do, do you know when these comments were made? Is this on the day? Does it say that, that you organized a perfect day? Uh, it's the on page six, the, th the third comment down. Approach, please. Ramon, this comment I'm pointing to you, um, pointing you to on page six, says it's under Very T. Yes, Kurt, you organized a perfect day uh, for skiing. Thank you. That's true, Scott. I still have my wheels. It was nice to get to know you a bit today. Do you know whether that was written on the day of the accident? I'm not sure who was or not. Would it surprise you? Uh, Mr. Sanderson was writing articulate notes like this after being knocked out and unconscious for two minutes? Uh, it doesn't sound that articulate to me, but... Again. Okay. <clears throat> and in the middle under very T, uh, do you see that where it says, yes, Kurt, you organized a perfect day? Yes, I do. Look at the number of days it is. Is it 2000? It says 2,583 days ago. Yes. So those comments were made on different days. Yes. Still remain subject to the orders of the court until the case is released. So thank you. Thank you. What should I do with this? Leave it right there. <laughs> Plan if you may call your next witness. Thank you for coming. Plan is called. Mr. Terry Sanderson. swear that the, that the testimony you are about to give in the case now before the court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Thank you. Have a seat. Good morning, sir. Comfortable and speak into the mic, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Could you state and spell your name for the record, please? Yes. My name is uh, Terry, T E R R Y. How? This is the fifth day of trial. We started last Tuesday. Um, you haven't. You weren't here much last week, were you? Not at all. In the court. In the courtroom. Were you in the courthouse? Yes, definitely.
let's say, but in this case, I didn't want to be here because I wanted them to speak totally freely and without the discomfort of being in my presence if they had something to say. Is that why you weren't here? Absolutely, yes. We're going to cut to the chittings because I made counsel a promise that I would have you in less than an hour. Wow. And so or do you want some background? I, we don't need a whole lot of background. Okay. Back in 2016, what time of year were you? I was advanced and immediate. There was no places I would go except um, serious bumps, um, narrow, narrow little gulches, and um, um, any big jumps. So uh, other than that, I would go just about anywhere. Okay. How often would you ski? Two to three times per week. Okay. For how many years? Well, I started... 37 years ago, it was a winter sport for my family. We lived at high elevation. Okay. And in all of your years of ski collision with Ms. Paltrow, have you ever been in another ski accident? Never. Have you ever skied with the ski patrol? As a matter of fact, I had the good fortune. I learned to ski from a family that owned a ski resort. They were, they were relation. And they would come out to Snowbird, and they were, I think, it was a whole family-run operation with eight children who were ski patrollers, and they were instructors. And I had the very best of company every winter for a week when the kids were out of school. And then I had the good fortune of having a Lions Club friend, Scott, who's still a dear friend, that lives up in Spokane, and he was a ski patroller for Targi. And he said, Terry, come up with me you know, on this weekend. And, and I said, I'll slow you down. And he said, you know what? Follow me and do what I do. And that's what I did. And I had the good fortune of spending a lot of time with Scott and seeing and observing. So it sounds like you've skied at Snowbird, skied at Targi. Had you ever skied at Deer Valley on the day of the collision? No, it, it was, Valley? it was. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about that day. Um, couple of preliminary things. I, I asked Miss Paltrow on Friday how tall she was. How tall are you? I think I'm now 5'5". Five, five. Okay. What's your weight at the time of the, the collision? In the VA, you don't take anything off. You, whatever you walk in with, your coats, heavy coats in wintertime, boots, um, walls. I get used to when I <laughs> <laughs> what, how, so, how, how much did you weight about? Fully dressed. I was or undressed, probably 63, 62 pounds, 163, 162. Okay, all right. So we've, the, the jury's heard about meetup groups. What is a meetup group? Uh, um, hard to accumulate friends. And um, so when a fellow that I was on a hike with, a, a new fellow, said, have you heard of meetup? And I hadn't. So he says, look it up and sign up. And I did, and it was a wonderful organization of groups of people where you had a shared interest, uh, whether it was dancing or concert. And so I signed up and joined some groups and it was really a life changer. Okay, so my kind of a group of people in the meetup group, is that fair? That's right. All right. Did the group have a plan? I mean, were you the organizer of that meetup group that day? No, I was not. I asked Kurt to take that over because I planned on being gone that day. and. Kirk organized that. Okay. It sounds like, obviously, you weren't gone that day. You ended up being able to make it. I came back a little early from wherever I was and, and just said, oh, I'm, I'm going to go ski today. And um, and to see on the list that day also was a lady that I had met when I first moved here. And she happened to be a ski instructor at Canyons, and but she had been at Deer Valley as well. And so I called and said, Debbie, I got, I'm going to go. I'll, I'll pick you up. So I picked her up at Kimball Junction on the way and went there with her and dropped her off the skis. And we met the group and I asked her if it would be okay if she let our group out because she's very familiar with Deer Valley. And so um, she said yes and gave us the rules of the road. Would you like to hear that? So the meetup group, you guys kind of ski all together. Ish. Well, and this skiing meetup group is unusual. It's like herding cats. You've got those of just want to go, and, and, and they kind of started making them comfortable, and uh, so they don't stay together well. We meet, usually we'll say, let's meet at Alps. It the road for that day. What were the rules of the road that day? Well, the only rules of the road, we, 
are pretty familiar with the rules of the road, so uh, we don't go over that at the time. But Debbie just said, we're going to start down, band down Bandana because that's how we'll get to the blacks of really good skiing. So our group knew that's where we're headed. And she said, whatever you do on Bandana, just straight over to the right edge. We were over to the right side to avoid the people. Did it have anything to do with your vision? There's been a lot of discussion about your, your right eye problem. Yes. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Skiing on the right side of the, the, uh, the run, did that have anything to do with your right eye? Yeah, maybe that's one of the things, yes. Okay. We'll talk about your vision in just a couple of minutes, but sure. I want to focus on the collision right now. Craig Ramon, he just testified. Oh, yes. You saw him. He, he also testified last week. How well did you know Craig at the time um, back February, February 2016? Um, he was one of maybe an average of 15 people, 10 or 15 people would come, so I shared his company. Uh, during those times and um, I knew him only as being an amazing skier, strong, strong skier and and knew that and I appreciated the fact he tended to like to follow the group the time together and there may be an, a couple of other occasions where we met with him but usually there was somebody else there um, along with us. Okay. So not I don't remember being able to do that. Um, it was really a very nice day for skiing, and I was really looking forward to it. And of course, Curiali has amazing groomed runs. Found that out right away. And um, so, um, I'm starting from the, when I get off? When, when you got off of the ski lift. Gotcha. So, I was on a chair, probably four people. I think uh, Joanne, Debbie, uh, Craig, and there could have been another person besides my and we had already met and discussed going down run, or going down the sides. And so I came over the top of the hill and saw that and headed for the right side and I'll pick it up there. And everyone just kind of dispersed, some more to the right and more to the left. And I remember looking and stay away from that area where the pile of snow is piled up. And uh, off piste can be a rough ride. If you have to divert and run out in there, some skiers can't make a lot of bumps. So I start. I went right down the run and started just making nice soft turns and um, staying within that boundary. It could have been as much as five yards wide, but it might have been five or six feet. I don't can't, ima can't imagine. I can't remember. Lots of room. And so I'm just skiing easy and paying attention. And um, all of a sudden, in front of me is two big signs. I've never seen that big of slow down sign, size high, with great big letters, slow down. I went, whoa, and I'm looking around and the crowd's about the same as me and speed wise. And so, so did I just, you pay attention to the sign? I did, and I backed off of whatever I was doing, and then another big sign, like 10 feet away, the same eight by four by eight sh sheet up there, big letters. Well, they're serious, must be lots of merging trails down here. So um, I just backed off and again, and um, um, I could see down where the edge of the run went, it curved around, a tree line came out a little bit and it, the little run came, turned, curled around. And I could see about half of the, I don't know if it's a montage or the empire, could about half of that beautiful building and and um, I, it was wide open. There was nothing nothing in front of me and so um, I came around that corner and it was I heard something I've never heard of and then boom and it was like some that's what I had until I was hit Th that's what was going on in, in your mind Over overruled that's what's going on in, in your mind you hear that scream App, that was instantaneous. Oh my gosh, somebody's out of control. And they're really seriously out of control. Not time for a hockey stop. I didn't go think about that, but most people could avoid that, I think. Good skiers. Okay. And I'll move on. Okay. So you he, you He's overruled. He's overruled. Okay. Thank you. So you hear this scream. Yes. What happens next? You know, I got hit in my back so hard, and it, I, I'm absolutely flying. 
Now, you're not airborne. Well, it, all I saw was a whole lot of snow, and I didn't see the sky. But I was flying in that sense. I had no control. And I remember this thinking, okay, you really got to hang on. Crowd on the left, and I thought, I don't know who's wanted over there, and I do not want to get them mixed up in here. And I've heard, you know, um, that maybe that's not decided about how my ribs really got hurt. I absolutely lurched with what little I could off of my skis a little bit more to the right to keep, to make sure nobody over here got involved on my left side. And then it was like the ground's coming up, nobody in front of me, just me, and you're falling far further than 90 degrees like you fall on a floor. You, you, you got that extra, and so it's quite a ways to hit the ground. And I just said, okay, you've got to protect your face, you know, and your head, and that's the last thing I remember. It didn't happen. I did glance over and saw, just, just out of the corner of my eye, I could see, not glance over, but I could see somebody going by, and I'm going, okay, they're, they're safe. Last thing I remember, everything's black. Did black. the person who struck you land on top of you? I wouldn't know that. I absolutely would not know that. I was just surprised. I had no upper body strength enough to be able to catch myself. I had no idea. Did she? Do you remember hitting your head on the ground? No, that part, no, that's all gone. I just remember it, my hand collapsing, and that's the last thing I remember. I'm getting an adrenaline rush here, I guess, living this again, just being here present too. Uh, and let me just stop you really quick. You said you're getting an adrenaline rush. Is this something that you enjoy? Adrenaline rush? Not this no. kind. <laughs> Not now. Okay. Okay. All right. So what's the first thing that you remember? Or the next thing that you remember after well, you're yes. on the ground? Um, the first I remember is everything is black, like I'm unconscious. But it's like my subconscious is going into protection mode, like, you better pay attention here and listen to what's being said to you. And I couldn't really hear what he was saying, but I just knew he was mad, and he was right, I mean, right close to me. And I'm feeling a little afraid, and I tried to move, and I could not move a limb. I couldn't move my head. I couldn't move my body. Nothing was responding. Just this message I was getting clear. And I heard him say, do you realize, you realize that you weren't skiing under the rules? You hit somebody. You hurt somebody. And it just insistent that I was the bad guy. And that's why I said, this has got to be a husband or boyfriend is really mad at me. And I sound did, like a big... Did you know who he was? I had no idea, no idea. It was just a very angry person trying to um, bully me into believing something that I didn't think could happen, which I heard a woman's voice, right? Again, couldn't move. And about the third time he went through that, and it's getting louder, and it's, I could fight. I couldn't fly. Who's, who's going to try? And I tried moving something, and I could move my skis a little bit. I could just feel just below my knee. I could just slide my skis a little bit. And, and, and that's an amazing. My skis are still on. They're still on. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking I gotta placate this guy. He's really mad. If he decided he wanted to jump on me right now, I, he could finish me off. I was, so I remember, I remember saying, Twice. You're whispering I know I am, because maybe. that's what I heard. Nothing was coming out. My lips were moving. My tongue was moving. There was nothing coming out of my mouth, and my heart rate went up again. Okay. It looked like what you were mouthing was, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. And, and I was just going, I can't believe it. I thought, I'll try again. I'm sorry. Kind of mumbled, whispered, whatever you want to call it, I'm sorry. Was that you apologizing for causing the accident? No, absolutely not. I was trying to placate this man in the only defensive manner that I could. Okay. You've talked about the man who was, who was yelling at you. 
I guess, um, and and that was self-protection, I guess. I only heard a male voice, a mad, angry male voice. I heard nothing. Maybe that happened before I came to that point in consciousness. Were you still on the ground at this time? Still on the ground, absolutely, face down okay. on how the did, ground. How did you end up getting up? Well, that's a story too, but basically um, I heard Craig saying, Terry, are you okay? Now, this is Craig Ramon? Well, at that point, I didn't identify his voice. I, you know, I'm okay. And, um, and about the third time it hit me, somebody wants to, is here to help me. I didn't, at that point, except an angry man was there. And I, I said, oh my gosh. And I went through, and I, I looked up, and I could see... Craig is standing there above me, eight or ten feet, and on his immediate left, my right, was a man in an all green outfit and with a helmet on. And I thought, oh, he's here to help me, right? He looks like he's from Deer Valley. And so um, I, I was going through the things, answering his question about that with my thoughts. Now back to my, what my injuries. I'm, Craig is saying, are you okay? And I said, oh, my, my ribs are so sore. There's just this really deep, throbbing purple pain here. And, and then I said, um, my vision is swimming with sparks on my brain. And all this time you're still on the ground? I'm still, yeah, the next point is that after I tell me about my ears going, I'm going my ears are bugging. Oh, and my, I said my brain is like it's on Novocaine. And and then I realized, oh, I'm not seeing, oh, I, you know what, I missed a spot. And that's where I looked up and couldn't see them and got frightened about that. And I realized, going, oh my, what's going on? And then I went like this and go, oh, so happy. I could see. And before, I started telling what all is wrong with me, answering his question. And then Craig said to me, as I remember, of course, I'm, my brains are a little bit stretched out of place. And, and I, I, I re I remember um, him saying, do you know who you are? And what I thought I said was, oh my gosh, I can feel this pathway in my brain that's going around and trying to figure out who I am. And yes, I know I'm Terry. He said, um, do you know where you are? And I said, I know I'm skiing, but I don't know where I am. And that's when the man in green took off. He was, I was kind of noticing that he really wasn't interested in what I had to say. He wasn't asking questions. He was standing there rather stoically, head not moving, goggles on, just resting on his poles and his skis and was sort of disinterested. But when he skied off, my heart sank because I really thought he was the one person that was there to help me. And, and I, I, I'm laying on the ground with my beginning. But That's right. How did you get starting to get a little shivery, uh, uh, maybe from a little shockish, maybe, and and I started. I got to go. I got to get my skis downhill, and I started sliding my skis around and my legs around, and it's so painful every time you have to contract your Terry. Thank you. How did you get up? Thank you. That is one of my habits. I just. After I got halfway around, he said one word to me. He just reached down and grabbed me and jerked me up on my feet, which I was not ready to be up on my feet. My head's swimming. I'm in pain. I'm worried about falling down again and breaking a rib, puncturing a lung. He gets me up, and I'm on the edge. hard to get my skis under me, and I'm stomping down the snow and trying to get him in the spot. Got my, got my poles wedged in, and I think I've got it in stability, and... He's gone. And this time, I could see him. I could watch him go all the way down. And I'm up. I'm standing up with him. Am I feeling safe? No. People are going by, shh, 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 you know. And I'm thinking, man. Hmm. Down a little ways, but then didn't quite make it too far. Is that accurate? Yeah, he said, you think you can ski? And I'm thinking, if I, the option is getting left up here, I will try anything. I got to get off of here. So yes, uh, he said, follow me. And I did. And I don't know how I was skiing. I think I was edging. I think I was probably snow plowing. And he finally 
turned around and said, Terry, Terry, stop. You've forgotten how to ski. He, and, of course, it was just, we were trapped. And he said, i got to find help. Here. Eventually, Craig got help, yes? Yeah, he said, i got to find help. And so I just put my head down and prayed that I wouldn't get smacked into again. I felt pretty vulnerable. And he disappeared. What happened when help arrived? You know, um, Whitney, um, I was so grateful to see someone. And now, is that I, Whitney Smith? Yes, I, well, that's her name. Mm -hmm. And the jury has seen pictures, and we're going to put another picture up in just a couple minutes. Is she the one in a, in a red jacket that there's a picture of in this case? Do you know? Yes, as a matter of yes, that's her. Mm -hmm. All right. So did she take you down on the trip? The now, you got to remember these things because I'm going to ask again later. She had a horse named Titan that she wore in the years off. So she told me to remember those things I'm going this is a brain test. She's wanting to check if my brain's okay. And from that point on, I quit worrying about myself. I quit worrying about my injuries. It was just like, I'm going to remember this. I do not want to have any brain injuries. And I locked onto that and, and nothing else. And later on, she did ask me. I, it just, I was so determined to hang on to that fact, those facts. Yeah. Once you got down, what type of medical attention did you receive? Still at the ski resort. Yeah, well, Whitney is not a paramedic. She's not any intense knowledge about neurological testing and pupil testing and cranial nerve testing. She did, she did a great job of doing exactly what she's supposed to do just to be at that triage level to decide what kind of care I needed. Okay, so what type of care did you get? What type of medical treatment did you get oh, no when medical. you got down to the bottom? No medical treatment. Am I missing something? Did, did you get checked out at the Instacare or anybody? Oh, after, after yes. we left there. Yes. Um, I asked Debbie, I said, where can I go and get checked and see what they say? And she said, well, let's stop at the Instacare. I know it's on the way there. When did you learn that it was Gwyneth Paltrow that you were in the collision with? It was, it was brought up, I think, that, which is what I tell them, go ski and go enjoy yourself. And, um, and so um, it, it came up, and it probably was Craig who said, I heard him say it was Gwen and Paul Joe. And to me, it's like, I'm not into celebrity worship, so. To collide with a celebrity? Absolutely not. That is not who I am, no. Do you ever write that? Ever tell anybody that? I don't think it came out in those words, but I, I don't remember that. I think I was trying to communicate to my kids and the reason was because I got calls from friends that knew my kids that heard I got crushed on, at the ski resort. And so I, I, I thought, I gotta, I gotta let my kids know I'm okay. That was my main point. I don't want to be okay. And so I just, I started it out and May said, I'm famous or something. Okay, we're gonna pull that out. Could you pull up Thank you. exhibit 111, please? Yes, defense exhibit 111. We're going to call it the like the Elmo works better than the new technology, doesn't it? And Terry, you could come down if you need to. Or does it show on your screen there? Um, yeah, but I'm not the the eye doctor. I'm not wearing fashion because 
I broke the pair of glasses I bought and couldn't find the old pair, so now I'm... Okay. All right, so I want to go through this. Um, Defense Exhibit 111. Do you see, first of all, there are... On the bottom is the first at uh, 8 o'clock p.m., yeah. and then the, the response was at 9.32 p.m. Do you see that? I do. All right. I mean, if I read it right... From you to Jenny, Polly, and Shay. Those are your three daughters? Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. Okay. And the subject said, I'm famous. Do you see that? I do. Why did you write, I'm famous? You know, again, my head was scrambled. All I was trying to do is desperately didn't pick my words well. Um, not at all how I felt. And I really was trying to add a little levity to a serious situation. The link. We now know what the link shows. Okay, sorry, I thought you were going to the GoPro. I'll withdraw my comment. I'm just talking about the link. Yes. Okay, so we now know what the link is. Yes. Correct? The link is... It's the picture of Whitney Smith. Oh, it's right there. Fantastic. Thank okay. you. It's that. And then that leads to later comments back and forth between you and Craig. Yes. In that, under that picture, can you read what it says? Um, yes. Um, Whitney kept me entertained while probing you me. You want to speak in the mic? Oh, yes. Um, Whitney kept me entertained while probing me with questions to evaluate my senses. A dedicated outdoor person and horse lover from Michigan. She also... First of all, did you write that under her picture? You know, I don't know what verbalize things because things weren't making sense at all in all right. communication, and she may have helped. All right. Can you go back up? To the and Shay, who testified last week, she responded to you with the top post, correct? Yes. All right. Can you read what it says? Actually, let's put the subject. Read what the subject says. It says, I'm famous at what cost? Question mark. Do you know why Shay wrote <laughs> that? Well, that it, do, I, do you I, know? I think she may have called me. Did she? Um, right after. Do you remember? Um, I'm pretty certain that she checked in on me. And um, um, what? What did? Do you remember what you told her during the phone call? Yeah, I had a chance to talk about my symptoms exactly. I think, and and that I, I said, I said, you know, as many people that were on that slope that day maybe a couple hundred within that vicinity, there has to be a, a GoPro um, picture or video. If it's a helmet mount, they're going to look over just like Craig did, right? And they're going to go catch it. They hear a holler, they're going to catch it. I'm going, just know there's one out there. we got to find that. That is the evidence we need. And um, so Terry, she misinterpreted did you have a GoPro? Absolutely. I do have one, yes, but I did not have it on that day. Do you know of anybody in your ski group that had it? It was what we needed. All right. Okay. You can take that off. Thank you. Let's talk about your injuries. What injuries, to your understanding, Right now. What, right now. What, it, your understanding as to what, what happened, happened to Terry in this collision? At this point, I know that I had at least at least four broken ribs. Um, I sus sustained a concussion, um, and um, that's the two main factors, I think. And then ideas and thinking where it needs to be, opposed to what I'm thinking. Let's talk about how your ribs 
how your brain injury, how that different things, physical wise, how, how have you changed physically since the accident? Well, I can't ski anymore. I was told that if I did and had another crash in a nursing home, the odds of that's very high. So and, no more skiing. Well, and I, I tried, I tried not to go back, and, and and I did ski a few more times by myself just to see if I still could. I had this ungodly-looking fluorescent red outfit I bought, a MIPS helmet to protect my brain better, and I thought I can do this. I really, this is my love and joy. I meet friends, I make friends, I stay with them the whole year. They're, it's a year-round activity, and it's a life, lifelong activity. And so I, I tried, and I felt like I was skiing through landmines, just ridiculous. Looked ridiculous, very fluorescent red, wasn't thinking very well. And then, and, then, and um, um, gradually gave it up, just three or four times, I think I was done. Okay. Before we go into more activities, what about physically? Do you have pains, aches, pains, problems? Your physical being, how are you? Don't take any risks and more brain damage. And I'm not sure I understand your sure. question exactly. Have you had any kinds of balance issues or headaches? Um, my life was living in an orange chair, sitting there. And then sit for half an hour and tell Carlene, I gotta, I gotta go back to bed. But to be fair, it's not like that anymore. No, I had no anymore. No, it's not. Let's talk about mentally. How, how have you seen yourself change mentally? What are some things that you've noticed or difficulties? Many things I don't have the words or the intelligence or training to explain. You have lots of words. I do. Just as I never feel like I've explained enough, there's, I, it's like big gaps. I go, I got to start from the beginning, and everyone may recognize that by going through and building a case, and they don't know what I'm talking about until I get to, so it's, everything is backwards. I'm building from the little things and, and then saying, oh, I'm talking about apples. I'm going, I had no idea. Upside down and backwards, communication just feels like I, I can't connect. And um, um, yeah, personality changes is not something I know. I just know it's different. Things are weird. You ever get lost? Oh my gosh, that was among the first signs when I tried to get out and work on the green team. And um, the, I, wait, whoa, whoa, what's the green team? What, the, what are well, you talking I, about? I volunteer for lots of groups, um, probably years, hours a year at least, I would think. And, Green Team is one of those. It's a concerts, and USANA was the main one, even though we've done Liberty Park. And it's a group of maybe 15 people. And we stay up until 1 o'clock in the morning picking that up up there and recycle the last year I worked in 2015, 23 tons. And it's not just walking, 16,000 steps on what I saw. And it's bending and stooping and lifting and picking up and dragging a bag. And it's hard work, but really really bonding with a lot of people and doing that so that's what that is so I try going up there and I and usually I carpool and that day I didn't usually the driver and so I parked and went and did our thing and it's maybe 12 30 1 o'clock and went back to the car and headed home I was lost now just to clarify this is since the, the ski crash right oh yes okay and my instincts for always knowing where north is, and it's really been good having grown up in the mountains. It just was instinctual at night. And that happened a second time. Had and that ever happened to you before this ski collision? Uh, maps. And so um, I, I'm pretty sure I've lost visual memory because it doesn't, knowing the that, that feels like, and I know a little bit about that, that feels like a deficit I have, that that doesn't, I don't retain that anymore. I can be there a dozen times and I still have to use maps to make sure I get there. Really odd. What about emotional, Terry? How are your relationships with your family and friends since the ski accident? You know, um, my interaction with my family has been more difficult and um, I, I think I, 
of course, I'm desperately to be close to my family and my girls, but something's wrong in my essence and what I, what I bring to the table with them. And communication is not as smooth, and and uh, um, it's it's been more difficult, no question. And they've they've told me they've noticed some changes. Yeah. Now I didn't know you before. The jury didn't know you before. What kind of relationships did you have with your girls before this crash? <laughs> My goals are always angels. I'm their protector. <laughs> Some things happened to them. I'll testify. But I rode home with them and started sobbing. So I get caught up in that. Do you love your girls? Oh my gosh. There's More been some discussion about um, your relationship with Jenny and that it's not always optimal. From your perspective, what is your relationship like with Jenny? And how? As I do with my other two daughters. Not probably, definitely we don't. We just have a hard time um, in that process, and I will not give up. I try to push to keep that those lines open, but there's been times when there's been long breaks. And um, yeah, I, I feel like her protector more than anybody does. So it's hard, been harder for me to transition from being a parent to being an adult, an equal adult. I just feel like I need to intervene more on her behalf and help her. This has been hard. Let's talk about Carlene. We heard her testify last week. Um, she's a catch. Why'd you let her go? In my choice, I wouldn't have, but I had it after eight months, I had to tell her to leave. I said, I'm not asking them, I'm telling you, you got to leave. And I... Why'd you tell her to leave? I knew she didn't buy into this. She didn't buy in to me not being the same person and coming coming into a relationship. And, and I said, I'm not sure I'm going to get to back to normal again. And I don't want you to feel like you're, that I'm a crippled vet and you're going to stick it out with me because I know you would. Half a brain or whatever. I know you would, but don't do it. You need your life. You run right now. And it was a sad time for both of us, I know. And she's in a great relationship with Bill now. And that was the purpose. And I think better than what I would have brought, honestly. It's hard to admit that, but it's true. Sure. Okay, we'll take a short recess. Why don't you stand now and then you're welcome to step down during <laughs> Council, would you approach the bench, please?
to publish the deposition and then bring up on this a highlighted sentence and answer because it's really slowed things down and I, uh, from my deposition with Mr. Sanderson, I, I suspect there's gonna be that kind of slowness and I'd rather- Deposition, uh, but they don't show it. I think I'll permit it on, because this is a party uh, and under Rule 32, it can be used oh. for any purpose. I thought he meant for the other witnesses. And the section that you're using for impeachment, Mr. Owens, is the only section that's appearing up there. Okay, that's the James issue. Sorry. We'll do it. All right. Yes, we're okay with that. I, I thought he was talking about some of the other witnesses that we're preparing. Okay, call them in. Yes, yes, you did. Copies of. If you're putting it up on the screen, I mean, for the witness, they may not need to actually go into this. Uh, that may save you some time. But but put them there just in case the witness needs them. Ms. Van Orman. Thank you. We've had trouble. Oh, okay. That's the balloon But everything else functions well on it. Just leave it. We'll, we'll, we'll work Come around on. it. Okay. Yes. All right. So let's get back to some of the things that you've noticed. Um, we've heard from others, but I want to hear from you. Yes. Um, have you had any type of anger issues since the collision that, that you've noticed? There's no question. I have much wider range of much wider. What about your social life? Do you... Before, before the ski accident, what kind of things did you do? You know, I, I look back in the last couple of years, in fact, I did that, and I just realized I was in the groove of my life at that stage. I had a lady in my life. We just did everything together and spent, I believe it was two years together, and had cleaned up our lives and physically in St. George where she's located and I spent some time here. It was wonderful. We cleaned up the businesses of homes and combining homes and parents' homes and and we had she as and, and so I had a great deal of connection with her. And, and so since the car or the car, excuse me, uh, the ski accident, yes. do you still go and do fun things and have that Zest for life. I've been self-imposed ninety percent staying in the house, a recluse, and don't feel the same about when I go to places. Um, you still travel, though. You know, I have traveled because. What? Let's put it, let, let's talk about travel for a minute. Yes. Be before the ski collision, did you do a lot of travel? A lot of travel. It happened to be something that Carlene liked to do, and so alone before the ski. I accident. did. I alone in a few places. Yes. Okay. What about since the ski collision? Have you still traveled? I have traveled and easily confused about things, um, so I usually request having somebody else along, 
also because of this funny aberrant foot thing wanting to go its own way. I don't feel as safe. And then also, um, yeah, things would, I put their wrong name, I'd get their name spelled wrong and it's important. And the birth date, which I should know. So it was, it was difficult and I really wanted someone to go with me. I didn't feel as secure in traveling alone. Have you traveled alone since the ski accident? I have not. I had one time when um, a, f a friend, one friend, there's actually two, but I had one friend when we had planned a trip to Europe, a physician's assistant and um, a, a, my yoga instructor. And she decided right before the trip, um, Terry, oh my gosh, I'd known her as long, and one other one as well, as long as I've lived here, almost five years, I'm guessing, at that time. And it's like personality, like that's something that develops from the time you're a child. How, what do you do about a personality issue? Something's changed, I'm, I don't know, aggressive. And you know what, that lady will not answer her phone, texts, and I have- Well, picture. we're not gonna say her name on, on no, this being broadcast, not, so we're, we're, not not. Gonna, we're not gonna She's a that. lovely lady, yes, she is. Have, have your other friendships been affected as well? Yes, um, another lady that I knew for quite some time, a sweetheart, also of a woman. Um, we, I couldn't realize how lonely I was. Yes, I should have taken more time to absorb that, but I was so lonely because we were together all the time. So I reached out and we spent a couple of things, to, activities together, and I couldn't believe the words that came out of her mouth. Well, it made me feel like what's wrong with me and how do I fix my personality? How do I fix it? I'm a different person. And I lose self-confidence. The person I am, I'm going, what happened? Terry, are you trying to improve yourself? I've been in denial. I've been in denial about my issue. I refuse to believe I have brain issues. I've just done everything I can. I knew I had a critical window to restore stuff, and I did everything I was told and everything I could find out about trying to get those things. Are you trying to improve yourself? Yes, I don't want to have brain issues. I'm trying to prove I don't have it. Everything I do, I'm trying to prove I don't have that wrong with me. There's been a lot of discussions about how Terry was before this ski collision. Um, and could you put up Defense Exhibit 23, please? And I'm actually going to move for the admission of the entire Defense Exhibit 23. I'm assuming there's no objection. Does any of this be redacted? So, uh, let me just state that my understanding was that Ms. Van Orman was going to be done at 11. I almost changed. changed. Right now, she's moving for uh, Defense Exhibit 23. Any objection? She's no. Okay. So it's received. As to the redaction concern, I, I do believe at least some part of it may need that, but it looks like we're not showing those. Are you showing his address, for instance? Um, but, well. At the bottom of that, do you have that exhibit in front of you? I think I do, yes. I think I do. All right. Please don't go as far as the address shown here. There's the address from there. Yep, thank you. Do you see where it says chief complaint down at the bottom? Yes, I do, yes. It says regular visit? Yes. Was this a regular visit that you were attending with, um, with, with your provider? Um, it, it could be, I, I, I don't know. I usually saw her once a year or once every six months. So if that's what it says, I believe it's. Okay. And just for reference, Terry, I know you weren't here. The next page, please. Defense 23. All, all of Defense 23. I have nothing in front of me now. It, it's coming. Don't worry. Oh. 
All right, so this is the second page of that exhibit. Talks about 69-year-old male with HTN, HLD. We're not going to go through all of those <laughs> yeah. things. Thank you. Um, just got over a, a URI. Do you know what a URI is? I do. What yeah. is it? Upper respiratory infection. Okay. So you just got over that yesterday. Cough, just runny nose, um, and upper respiratory symptoms. This is going to be his test for the cough. Had not had a persistent cough, etc. Weight gain. Thinks eating out too much. Were you eating out too much? <laughs> yes. Um, Carlene and I chose to eat out. And Did you tell your doctor that? You know, um, I relate it to the URI. If someone who's just gotten over a viral or bacterial infection, either one, over two weeks with the cough and just feeling worn out, I wouldn't doubt I wouldn't say something like that. Most and in fact, would. it says, does not good, just not doing the things you used to, but also thinks you're going to start skiing again and re reinstate your gym membership. Did you have a plan? Yes, I absolutely did have a plan. All right. And that, that's all I know. Um, talk about planning, and I, and I meant to ask you about this before we, we move on. Um, do you have? Do you know what executive functioning means? Yes, I'm familiar with that term actually from what, before. What's your understanding of what it means? It's ability to coordinate your actions through your life, to be able to put things together, make decisions about them, get things done, and be efficient and effective, and be able to multitask and um, um, be effective, be and efficient and effective. move along. So Terry, you were talking about executive functioning. You kind of gave a, a what that means to you. Looked like to me from Exhibit 23, make a plan in your life and kind of follow through with that. Have you been able to do that since the ski accident? The examples of not be are one of my collections. I keep track of of all the things I want to do and can't do, and there's. There's at least 12, I guess I should say 1,200 or 1,500 items on my to-do list. When I had, I look back to 2016, it repeats every day, whatever changes I make. I look back to 2016 and there were half a dozen, dozen back there, which is Stephen Covey's rule, right? That's what you get. Things that I could do, I was really handy. My dad was a handyman. And I learned and I have the tools. I have an example. You know what? I would love to hear the example, but I have made a promise. Go for so it. I want to shift gears. Let's do it. At some point um, after the ski accident, some time passed, and there was a press conference that was held. Yes? Yes. yes. Okay. I wasn't involved in that. I wasn't even your lawyer at the time. What conference your idea? Absolutely not. Do you why the press conference was held? Your Honor. Is he waiving his attorney-client privilege? Because if he is, I'm going to drive a bus through that. What's the, what's the objection, counsel? He just violated his own attorney-client privilege, whose idea it was. 
I Objections overruled as to relevance. What is your understanding as to why a press conference was held? We understood and we agreed how important it would be. And I, hold on. I don't want you okay, to discuss, talk about anything that you, you talked about with your counsel. Thank you. Okay. Did you that should Deer Valley if anybody had a copy. After that press conference, did any GoPro videos serve? None. Has, have, have they ever? No, never. Terry, did you cause the ski collision <clears throat> with Ms. Powell? Absolutely not. I swear to my God and my family and my other father in heaven, it's like, no, no. I did not. Why did you bring this lawsuit? Well, oh, I, I realized after a period of time that no one believed how serious my injuries were. Just because I did wasn't out and interacting continuously didn't mean there was something any wrong with me. I really, really wanted an opportunity. I knew there was damages. And then there was lots of insults added to that singular incident. Lots of insults along the way. Dozen of other times where everything went contrary to my value system. And I just went, you know what? My daddy would say, if you go with facts. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Norman. Mr. Owens. Well, I caught a cold, so I'm kind of keeping my distance. this climate and dry air, I might have a bloody nose. Mm. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's talk about a few things. Did you ever say to me, I wrote, I'm famous because it's cool that I had a collision with a celebrity. Eh? I not if you have it on record, no, I don't deny it. I don't remember it. But well, let's go to page 15. Can you bring that up? Move to publish the deposition. Which Your I Honor, he said he doesn't deny it, so why are we publishing? Because the earlier denial happened? Sure. Like one hour ago, two hours ago, you told this jury, I never thought it was cool that I had a collision with a celebrity. Do you recall that? Yeah, I, yes, I guess I did say that, absolutely. And but that's not a true statement, is it? You have you have said this in your deposition, true? Honestly, I don't ever remember saying it. Bring it up, but whenever you but can. I hey. don't just I don't doubt you. I misspeak a lot. Okay, this is page fifteen, line five through eight. So the words "I'm famous," this is my question, seem to say I think it's cool that I had a collision with a celebrity. Was that your thinking at the date? You testified today that you no. Um, yes or no? Qualified, a qualified yes. No, I don't want to qualify. I Did you tell me that? Tell like I mind. said, how much do you weigh? And you said 175.80, how much did you weigh? And then you said 5'8", how high are you? How tall are you? Three inches different, right? I just found that out. I didn't realize. I've had Sir, people telling me that. Honestly. You told this jury that the accident you were 163 and 55. <clears throat> did you not like 2 hours ago? I did. Yes. Yes. But you told me in your deposition years ago that you were 170 to 180 and 58. True? How many years ago did we do this? 3 I've years lost, ago. I've lost a lot of weight. I'm down to my usual weight. 
you know we're interested not now in your weight today. We're interested in your weight on the day. Thank you. I knew where that was going. Do you going. agree you were 5'8"? Yes. Have you shrunk three uh, inches? I couldn't believe it either. I, w I wanted to argue because I think I'm 5'8 yet. You, have, you do have degenerative back disease I and those, those discs are I've getting been, squeezed. Is that why? I have to say yes. I've always been 5'8 and a half. And I knew I shrunk a half an inch, but three, wow. So that we have a clear, clean record. You're right. Yes, Your Honor. When uh, we talked about you being unconscious, and do you agree that someone who's unconscious doesn't have a stopwatch to figure out how long they were actually unconscious? I agree, that's true. After, after the collision? No. Yeah, that's over vague, and uh, that's, uh, I'll withdraw it, because I, I agree that's not everything. Correct. It's not everything. Sorry. Right, right. As far as l length of unconsciousness, do you agree that uh, you, you weren't stopwatching yourself. I have no idea. Yeah. And yet, you, you did tell people it varied over time. First a few seconds, then five minutes, then ten minutes. You did that, right? The VA, it was up to ten minutes long. Why did you change? I had no idea, and I was searching. I, I really had no idea, and I was trying to answer. I, I, don't. I, I don't. I don't know how to. Let's but, find it. What's the date? Let's go to page 95. <clears throat> one, two, or three. One. They're, they're all cumulative, so the page will tell you that. E5, starting at uh, line 7. When you first answers to people, and then whenever you can pull it up, page, page 95. The witness says, and then can we go to the middle paragraph? Yes, I do. And that was referencing the fact I personally did not know. I was a witness to, I was not a witness to how long I was unconscious. And so somebody told me it was two seconds and somebody said it was 10 seconds, 10 minutes. And so I, and then, Next paragraph. It depends on my visit. If I want to make a deal out of it, and that was the reason for my visit, then I might say for 10 minutes. I might pick the worst. That's kind of how we are. We go to the doctor's attention. We, excuse me, we go to get the doctor's attention about a specific thing. And it wasn't at that point how long I was unconscious was not a point. Yes or no? Two, you're placed under oath just like the one you were put on today. Yeah. And uh, your counsel present, and you've been able to, you were able Atlanta. to. Atlanta. Uh oh. We are Atlanta. We are yeah. Atlanta. We can do better. Let's show you the video. Seven hours or so of deposition. I can't really hear you, sir, but uh, my, my question is you had your advice of your counsel there. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> I asked the deposition, is there any reason why you can't give me your best testimony today? And you said yes. no, correct? Yes. And uh, I even told you, I think, that if you testify differently at your deposition, then uh, you'd, you would in front of this jury, I would call it to their attention. Do you recall this? Yes. And you took an oath and you, you then had the opportunity to make any changes to your deposition transcript. Is that true? Did you? No, I don't remember making any changes. I think I made two with you. Um, I said two corrections and and that I remembered. Okay. You and, didn't. And you, you didn't them. make some, and uh, counsel told you let's let's not submit those. I haven't looked at these depositions at all. Not at all. Do you dispute that? Uh, well, I heard you call Eric Christensen a Deer Valley instructor for 40 years, a bully. Did you say that? I did say that, yes. And that he was yelling at your face. Yes. I figured out. And I didn't we'll, actually know that until. And we'll meet that at, we'll meet him at one o'clock. Uh, 
Deer Valley's known, or at least puts itself out there, doesn't it, as like the most customer f Were your skis on or off at the end of the collision, do you know? Absolutely, they were on. Okay. Uh, Craig, you, by the way, you said you weren't here for your daughters, but you haven't been here for several, de several statements, right? Several, yes. It was more than just like, I don't want to make my daughters uncomfortable. You haven't been here for many. I did. I even tell my kids, if I'm doing something wrong, tell me, I want to be better. All right, so do you agree or disagree with this statement? Uh, Mr. Sanderson does not take criticism well. Hard for me to measure that. I've not been around other humans as much as I have been in the past. So it's hard for me to... And you said, I don't know. Do you agree with that statement? Um, I, if, if that's on the record, I don't disagree with it. I don't remember that particular part of our interaction. I just remember she said something to me and... It's the first question, right? Ski patroller comes up. For this yeah. incident, though, you injured your knee. I had when I first learned to ski that first year. All right. Beaver. Mm -hmm. So you don't dispute that the first thing Whitney asked you was like, how are you? And what happened? Do you agree those are like the first two questions? I, I Did you ever complain to Deer Valley about Eric Christensen, like I was treated like a bully? I had a lot of time to think about it. Yes or no? I don't know if I did. I wasn't... I think when I contacted Deer Valley, I, I was just yeah. after I wanted to find out who hit me and I wanted to copy the records and I didn't bring it up. Yeah, you never once wrote to Deer Valley, hey, you're, you're uh, some anger from them. I wanted to copy and find out who hit me. But seven years later, you're here saying he was terrible to me, just terrible. Uh, Ramon, Craig Ramon said to the effect that um, Christensen said to oh, now I want to be clear because I'm not trying to confuse you. Did you hear him when you were on the ski no. slope? No. Uh, okay. And when we got down into the into at the that medical point care. was yeah. my question yeah. on the mountain. Yeah. On the mountain, but in the shed, I was. Okay. You said your skis were on after the collision. Do you recall your head being downhill or yeah. uphill? Absolutely, absolutely, because I couldn't get up. And where was Gwyneth's head, Gwyneth's head when she came to arrest? Head have, down, head I, up? I have no idea. As far as I know, she didn't exist. Because you didn't see anything? I was out. I had no idea. Everything else is what I heard. Well, Eric Christensen, according to his report, that she appeared right in front of me. Yes or no? No, no. So he just Never. made that up. Must have. Deer Valley just uh, uh, falsified a record. Is that your opinion? I never would have said that. I knew where it came from. You know you sued Deer Valley in this claim, true? Yes. Sustained. And we're not dealing with any of that today. True? We're not dealing with... Objection. Relevance. Move to strike. Sustained. The, the question is stricken and the jury should disregard. So, Your Honor, I just want to be able to ask if, if you're willing, is you're not suing Deer Valley today. Your Honor, objection. Third. Now, move to strike again. Sustained. Stricken. Okay. Disregard, please. Saying you were going, you were flying through the air after she hit you. Did you say those words? Hey. Today I did. With regard to um, relationships prior, you had two divorces, true? I did, yes. And then uh, was it about 10 years of just dating various different other women? Yes, I wouldn't know exactly. Wouldn't be unreasonable, maybe. Well, I'm just saying if the act incident occurred in 2016, when was your second divorce? About 30, 10 years 30 earlier. Years ago. I'm thinking 
30 years ago, I'm thinking. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, being hundreds of miles away from you? We went back and forth. It's three hours, four hours maybe, the most. A couple hundred miles, I think, isn't it? I don't know. George, we'll let it, we'll move on. Thank you. Do you recall saying uh, that you agreed that saying I'm famous was a crazy thing to say? Agree? Absolutely, it's not me. It's, I'm, don't buy into that. But it was you, right? Just to right. be clear. When you say it wasn't me, it was in fact you. It's the other personality that's inhabiting my body right now. And you blame Gwyneth Paltrow for that? Do you recall having a kind of a stroke event like or so before the incident? Yeah, but that diagnosis has been changed. But it's an ischemic retinal occlusion? Probably due to a migraine. And you lost your right eye in that? I lost some vision in that eye, yes. And uh, that was one of the reasons you, re you retired? One of many. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, in terms of your vir. Uh, do you agree you sought therapy for anger management about 10 years ago? I don't. Or 15 years ago. I guess 06, about the time of your uh, second divorce. Because if you deny it, we're going to pull it up. I don't remember that purpose, but it, yes, I. okay. Was I seeing a shrink or... So, you can't ask me questions, unfortunately. Sorry, thank you. I'll, I'm trying to have you say yes or no, and then we go to documents if we need to. So, do you agree that you were seeing a therapist at the VA for anger management about 10 years, even before the incident? Only, I honestly don't remember it, but if you say so, I, I, I believe you. Yeah, I can't testify. Uh, so, if you I dispute it, then we go to the... I don't look at these records. I have it. Thousand pages. So you don't dispute it? I don't. Okay. And that there was a GoPro recording? Absolutely not. Do you recall at the exact time of this event, <clears throat> going down the hill, you were sort of crossing over to the right? Does that sound accurate? No. You were always on the right? Yes. Okay, Christensen is going to testify this uh, uh, this afternoon, so we'll talk about that. And um, do you agree in the five seconds or so before the call, there was a female skier, kind of beginner-ish, on your left? Yes. And do you agree that you actually tilted your head to you weren't going to hit her, that she would be okay? After the accident? Five seconds before the before, accident. Before, no. Did you so testify ever? I, I saw her. What I, re, what I, I don't know. What so, I remember is I always saw her. She was a little uncomfortable, and I gave her a little more blind. No. Did you turn toward her? No reason to. Look, you did not. No. Okay, we'll pull that up in uh, probably at our next visit. You texted about Whitney, the toboggan person, how how happy you were with her. True? I did, yes. Give her full credit. And we both read it. It's pretty articulate, pretty detailed, right? It is. You knew you were being subjected to a brain test, like a memory test. Well, I'm not... Okay, go ahead. Right? Didn't, didn't you tell us that? When she said, I want you to remember some things. Yes, oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, you knew you were you were being so small? I did. Remember President Trump said they gave things to remember and I got them all. Do you remember this? I don't. And that she entertained you. And that was all really within a half hour of the incident? A half hour of the collision? Is that true? I don't remember the time frame. Uh, Carlene may have been there by then. I don't know. She was helpful. But it was at the base where the toboggan went down to. Yes. That, was, uh, that wasn't 
Well, tell me, is that at the bottom of Deer Valley or is that a mid-level mid -level, clinic? I think. I think it was mid-level. All right. And is, there, so, is there a picture of you two in a wheel ever? I don't remember. She didn't know. Shay mentioned it, that there was a picture of you, and maybe it was at the Instacare. Do you remember anyone, any, any picture of you in the Instacare in a wheelchair smiling? No, I don't. Okay, and I asked you about it, and you said, I just smiled because they told me. Uh, if somebody says smile. Someone said smile, and you smiled. I don't remember. Does this ring a bell from your deposition? It does not. I. Okay. But that's. So you took a picture of Whitney, right? I did. Composed. That very nice email with all the details, and then you sent it to your. Probably, I don't say I composed it. I it, Car could have had Carlene shout. She made in there then. And that's well, you did it though, right? You you came up with those exact words. Carlene didn't do that. I may have helped her. Well, she doesn't know. She grew up in Michigan. That she's uh, won the Deer Valley Collision. Or the Deer Valley Grand, whatever <laughs> race, right? That's right. All right. She doesn't know that. Do you think Carl? I, when we, when we got I may home, have misunderstood. She her. was on her way. It's like an hour or two ago. Carly didn't buy into what, Mr. Owens? Do you remember saying those words? She wasn't buying into this. What was the question? It was uh, why your relationship with her deteriorated after the collision. I absolutely, absolutely, okay. I'm not sure I understand it. Okay. To be, be clear on that issue, and I realize I'm jumping around, but I'm keeping an eye on the clock. Did you, um, with regard to Carla? She was going to be better off without me, yes. And you told her that? Yes. So Carlene did I why? told her what I said. What I said, what I what I thought I said was, Carlene, I you gotta run. I don't want you stuck with me. And I know you would stay by me. I know she would. So your next then you started calling your daughters, it sounds like, even before the I'm famous thing. I don't remember that honestly. Uh, Shay said and they we gotta talk about you and how you were growing up and things and we're, we're kind of concerned that it will hurt your feelings. Do you recall this? I didn't know why, but they knew, I don't remember them telling me that. I just, I decided that before. All right, so we got, you're at the clinic. You take a picture, this is at this, on, on the Deer Valley Hill. You take a picture of Ramon and one of the other skiers, and they're all smiles. Did you know that? Um, boy, that's a little bit. A little bit. I do kind of you remember that. Uh -huh. Can you bring up the picture of Ramon? I do. Sure. Yeah. I believe that did happen. And uh, I don't. Move to admit. I think it was. If not, he'll get it. Go ahead. D87 received. Remember, and I can give you a hard binder if you want. It looks like the monitor's working. Uh, do you recognize you took. <coughs> when you went uh, to the Instacare, uh, do you have a personal memory of that? I really don't. I I, didn't, I don't remember if I had an x-ray. Like, okay, I think the physician assistant's coming tomorrow, but he wrote no no signs of confusion. Oh. Uh, do you dispute that? No. no I don't, I, not him. Do you agree that in your post-collision talk with Shay about six hours after? That would be me. I, my yes. parents didn't find out I was divorced until the last day. I don't want to put them through that misery. I don't share my information. All right, so let me, I think that's a yes, but I'm gonna re-ask it because we need to get it clear. Yes? Yes. Asked and answered. Thank you. It, Overruled. And then on the hill, on the hill itself, with the accident having occurred just in the prior minutes, do you agree that someone asked you, 
are you okay? That is absolutely beyond a doubt wrong. No one spoke to me when I was needing help. No one stopped. No one. So your testimony is Eric Christensen just sat there and looked at an unconscious man for several minutes. Is that your testimony? Yes. He never said one word to me that I recall. I, maybe when he got me up. So R Ramon, although he did uh, try to change him, did say that at one point you said, I'm okay. Do you dispute it? I dispute it. Now, I never to dispute felt okay. it, you have to know of what you said on that hill just after the collision. Yes or no? I knew. That's I'm, argumentative. That's not argumentative. O overruled? Yes or no? Um, question again, please. Yes. Do you agree that uh, you do not have a perfect memory of what you s told others after the, in, in the one, two minutes, three minutes after the collision? Or do you have a perfect memory? Well, that word is so ultimate, perfect. No, right. The answer would be no, it's not perfect. Okay. You told them, I'm okay. Do you dispute it? I dispute it. I okay. never felt safe and like anybody was there to help me. And then I he, would not have said it. He's about to testify that not only he was there, but a ski patrol or duo came over. One of them came over and said, do you guys need any help or words to that effect? And that you consulted with R Ramon and then said, no. Do you dispute it? I absolutely would have said no. I never said safe. So I don't want to say what I would have said. I want to know if you remember. I, do you remember? They, no, you, okay. I don't remember. In fact, asked. you don't even remember that ski patrollers came by. True? No, I do not remember that. Yeah. Ever. We talked about your right eye, but your left eye also... No. Uh, I see 2020 in that eye. Did you have a cataract in that eye? I did. And that cataract's been removed yes. since the ski collision? Yes. Uh, there's a report on February 4, 2015. His vision in his left eye is decreasing blind in right eye. Was your left eye decreased one year before the ski collision? Increasing in visual acuity or Sorry. in prescription? Was your left eye decreasing? Yes, getting less need for prescription, but not the visual acuity. Now, in addition to your stroke, you also had a, uh, your heart was not perfect. Do you agree? Before the ski collision? Perfect, of course I couldn't agree with the word perfect, no. Palpitations, you had palpitations, agreed? Had them most of my life. Yeah, most how many life. years? 40 years probably. And what's the latation? Is it just un um, it's unusual called, um, it's, beat? It's, it's just a little out of sync that happens when I'm really tired or if I've been on the treadmill too long or running too long and hard, then, then it will get a little funny syncope. It's called PCVs. So it, your, your beat's off. Is that fair to say? Yeah, but it's nothing yeah. I notice. It doesn't. Okay. And, but you are on two different uh, high blood pressure medications. Does that sound right? Yes. And that's because one, sure, his overall health, yes. I was affected by this accident. Your Honor, he says this has utterly changed his life. Yeah, just, just a minute.
afternoon recess at this time and return at 1.30. Thank you. May be seated. So, Council, cons consistent with the motion in limine ruling that the court gave at the uh, before trial, um, Mr. Sanderson, you can certainly step down. Uh, there, there's a there, there were it was a laundry list of medical issues, and uh, medical issues they should come in. If they're not relevant, they should not come in. So there will need to be. I mean, I need I need from you an assurance that this is a conditional relevance. Uh, situation and and that you will tie in the relevance later and not just a vague statement from an expert that this guy had a lot of health problems before so maybe you want to look at the reports or depositions uh, to make sure that whatever it is that you're examining this witness on will be tied in later by a medical expert uh, as either one of those would be relevant James is sort of on the damages end so I'll defer to him on the specifics but we are talking, when they say, it's utterly ruined my life, that's, we're talking about the whole package. And aging is one of the primary, just normal aging is one of the primary issues for our experts. And so uh, we got to look at the whole package, not how about this heart thing and how about this prostate thing and how about this, um, we're, we, will argue and our experts will back it is that that's the reason he is kind of slowly deteriorating progressive aging okay so, so take a look at what the opinions will be and if they're if you feel as though they're tied in um, then you can go in areas thank you it seemed like there was one other in the stand so I had I had seven witnesses lined up I was supposed to take over the case this morning at 9 a.m. Many are out of state. Um, plaintiff's counsel, I don't dispute everyone's work, but it has signed and so that we can read their transcripts. Um, and some people, some of our experts in particular, flying in out of state, I can testify during this small window. And um, I last as of last night, they were gonna be done at 10, then it was 11 and uh, they still haven't rested. I, I, true, I I'm, I'm, guess I'm not really blaming people except for, um, thank you. Okay. And, and also for the record, the, the court didn't issue an order uh, concerning you know, when one case one must be rested and one other uh, must be rested. I, I've been leaving it up to counsel to work that out and I, from my perspective it looks like Everyone's doing the best. Everyone's working hard. I don't dispute it, but it's hard when I have like kids flying in. I understand. You're getting a printout for the amount of trial time that's been used so far. Yes. As soon as we get to a working printer.